what did we look, do last Wednesday? We said that we have y equals to fx. We want to deduce y equals to one over square root one over fx. Sorry. Correct. How do we deduce this one? And then we look at page t twelve. Shh, pay attention. And then we look at page twelve, and there's a long table. We stop at point number five. Okay, we start at point number five. Is there any particular point that you find not very clear you want me to repeat? Or can we just move on to point number six? Can? All okay? Point number one to five, okay? Okay. Can I emphasize one thing? Stop talking, please. The table is not meant for you to memorize okay the table is meant for all of us is meant as a reference for all of us because actually to 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 do this deduction what goes behind it's just take reciprocal of all the y coordinates if you remember this principle actually there is no need to memorize that table do you follow what I'm saying okay so but to be complete let us then look at point six and seven um, can you help me close the door last person okay. okay what if you have some curve some curve that has a horizontal asymptote y equals to k. Uh, for example, the k is 2 in this case. What do you think will the reciprocal function look like? Will it continue to have the same horizontal asymptote? Will it continue to have a horizontal asymptote? What do you think? Are you with me? Yes? You are trying to take reciprocal of the y coordinates on this curve. What do you think will happen for y equals to 1 over fx? Will you continue to have the same y uh, horizontal asymptote? Let us, okay, let's zoom in a little bit more. Let's say, for example, you have a point. I don't know what. Maybe you have a point called. 3, 2.1 Okay, this point has coordinate 3, 2.1 You are going to take reciprocal of all the y coordinates So actually a corresponding point, I'm not going to write down is has coordinates 3, 1 over 2.1 Do you follow what I'm saying? Following that, maybe x coordinate 10 and then you 2.01 Then the corresponding, you get 10, 1 over 2.01 do you think then that this new y equals f1 over fx should have a horizontal asymptote y equals to half? Follow, don't follow. y equals to half. Because this y coordinates will tend to 2 as x tends to infinity. So these y coordinates will tend to half as x tends to infinity. Do you follow what I'm saying? Make sense or don't make sense? Make sense. So therefore, this new C2 will have a horizontal asymptote y equals to 1 over k. Of course, for this case, it will be y equals to half. Lah. Make sense? Okay, this y you must really understand, okay? Don't just memorize. There's no point in memorizing this bit. Okay, you go and make your own notes, okay? By writing this alone, I don't know whether you can understand maybe when you go back tonight, but make your own notes, okay? A corresponding point will be 2, 1 over 2.1, for example. Sorry, 3, comma, 1 over 2.1. Okay. Point number 7 is interesting now. What if then you, instead of a horizontal asymptote, you have an oblique asymptote? What really happens? That means this, right? Maybe your oblique asymptote is like that. 
y equals to x over 2 minus 1. Correct? Then for some curve that you draw, you have something like that. It tends towards, correct? All I'm interested in is this portion. This portion. Correct? Uh, as x tends to infinity, y tends to x over 2 minus 1. What do you think then happens when x tends to infinity for 1 over fx? Will it continue to have an oblique asymptote? Never mind, we use numbers, we try. Maybe we get, okay, for some point very far down, maybe I get a point, maybe 10, and then close to that, maybe I get 4. Okay, then correspondingly, I will have a 10 1 quarter. Okay, maybe it's not 10, maybe it's 100. 100, it should tend towards, what happened to my pointer? Eight. Eight, the button is not working. Okay, when x was 100, you get 50 minus 1, you get 49. Correct? So it will be close to 49, maybe 50, whatever. You get 50. Okay? Then you take 1 over 50. Am I right? You take reciprocal. What if it's 1,000? You get 500, for example. Correct? What if 10,000? You get 5,000. 1 over 5,000. So, do you think that you will have a horizontal oblique asymptote? No. You will not get oblique asymptote. What you will get is, as x tends to infinity, whether it's oblique asymptote or not, your y actually tends to infinity. Your fx actually tends to infinity. So can I safely write down? Uh, maybe this one you may want to write. As x tends to infinity, actually y actually also tends to infinity. Correct? Am I right? This part, y also tends to infinity. Maybe I should write fx. Uh, huh? Maybe I write to be complete. fx actually tends to infinity. Because of this oblique asymptote, no matter how the oblique asymptote um, is sloped, no matter what is the gradient, it should tend to infinity. Now, when you take 1 over infinity, what do you get? 0, right? That means you take 1 over a very big number here. That means you, as x tends to infinity, 1 over a very big number here, what do you get? You get 0, close to 0. Therefore, the, the reciprocal graph should have a horizontal asymptote y equals to 0. Do you all know why? Do you all know why? Yes? Get it? This is the most tricky one. Actually, these two are the most tricky. Make sure you know why. Can? You write down by yourself, 1 over fx, you will get 0, regardless of the gradient of the oblique asymptote. Do you follow what I'm saying? Can? Okay. Okay, just a quick summary. Okay, look up. In order to deduce the reciprocal function, keep the sign for y and change. That means, if the y the graph originally lies above the x-axis, the reciprocal should also lie above the x-axis. X-intercepts become vertical asymptote because you take 1 divided by 0, you get undefined. Clear cut. Increasing become decreasing. I think we've discussed it before. All right? Increasing become decreasing. Decreasing become increasing. Maximum point become minimum. This is a result of number 3, actually. 5 and 6 are what we discussed earlier. Okay? If it's a horizontal asymptote, it will become a horizontal asymptote called one, y equals 1 over k. If it's oblique, it's more interesting. It becomes a horizontal asymptote, y equals to 0, which is actually the x-axis. Okay, we talk so much, never mind. Only one way to test whether we really understand. Let's try. Let's try, huh? 